it's to the X, to the A, to the L, to the D, to the I, to the N. What's going on, everybody on YouTube? It's Zelda Nathan, Magician Master 100, known as the Master of All Spellcasters, here to do another review on a particular archetype, which, of course, has been a while since I reviewed archetypes. So, I know everyone's already reviewed this archetype, well, technically bits and pieces of the archetype, every time that it's been posted that there will be new monsters in this particular archetype, you know, everyone review it. But of course, I'm going to review all of them in one video. And they are the Shadals. Now, I'm calling this video Set 1 is because I believe that there might be another set coming out in the next pack or the pack after that one. Because, don't get me wrong, these are pretty good monsters, but however, they need more support than what they have. And, like a said, you know, they seemed good, but they probably need a little more support. For example, when the Prophecies came out, they somewhat had a little bit of good cards, but they needed more support. Until set 2 came, then after that, we had you know, the Prophecies gotten a lot better. So, like the Shadals and the Prophecies, we'll just have to wait till another set comes out. So anyway, let's not waste any time. Let's get started on these reviews. I will not go in any particular order. I'm just going to review them anyway. So let's review the first one. It's a fusion monster. Anyway, this one's called, I think, El Shadal. Yeah, El Shadal Nephilim. It's a light attribute, fairy, fusion, effect monster, level 8, 2800 attack, and 25 defense. The requirements will be on the description down below, and the effect as well, but I'm going to read it anyway. You need one Shadal monster, and one light monster. Must be fusion summoned. If this card is special summoned, you can send one Shadal card from your deck to the graveyard. At the start of the damage step, if this, if this card battles a special summoned monster, destroy that monster, and if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Shadal spell and trap card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. This card reminds me of, you know, Catastor in a way. Because, although the only difference is it, when it battles a special summon monster, of course. And if it's sent to the graveyard, you can add that Shadal card you probably sent to the graveyard by its effect to your hand. Now for the next card. El Shadal Med Rash. I think Konami might change the name names if you know what I mean, which they mostly do ooh, most of the time. Anyway, it's a dark attribute spellcaster, fusion, effect monster, level 5, 2200 attack, and 800 defense. Excuse me. Its requirements is one Shadal monster and one dark monster. Must be fusion summoned, cannot be destroyed by an opponent's card effects, neither player can special summon more than one, uh, than one per turn. If that this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Shadal Spell and Trap card in your graveyard and add that target to your hand. Wow, that's a pretty good of a lock card right here. Basically, it locks certain special summoning index. They like to special summon crazy. Basically, if you try to special summon more than once, it won't let you because it will only let you special summon once per turn. And of course, it can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effect, so if your opponent tries to like, Dark Hole it or Lightning Vortex it, it won't work. And if they destroy it by a battle, which I can, or I think that's the only way to destroy it, since it can't be destroyed by an opponent's card effects, I think that's the only way to destroy it. Or a monster, well, no, I know, not a monster effect. That would count as destroying it by card effect. Anyway, if it's destroyed by battle, you can add one of the Shadal spell and trap cards from your graveyard to your hand. The next one is Shadal Beast. It's a Dark Attribute Spellcaster Effect, level 5, 2200 attack, and 17 defense. And it seems to have a flip effect like most of these Shadals that are non-fusion monsters. Anyway, you can draw two cards and then discard one. Reminds you a little bit of Graceful Charity, except you don't draw three cards. You just draw two and then discard one. Anyway, if this card is sent to the great your buy a card effect, you can draw one card. You can only use the effect of one Shadal Beast. 
its effect once per turn and only that turn. Wow, Konami's really putting down this whole only use this effect once per turn and only that turn. Turn. I guess they're trying to prevent certain things from from happening, like you know, basically going crazy with certain effects. And for those of you who have been dragon lovers, sorry. Alright, this is a not dragon card. Shadal Dragon. Dark attribute spellcaster effect. Level 4, 19 under attack, and 0 defense. And it has a flip effect. You can target one card your opponent controls and return that target to your hand. And, well, to the hand, excuse me. This kind of reminds me a little bit of Hane Hane, except you can target a card your opponent controls and put it back in their hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target one spell or trap card on the field, destroy that target, and if you can only use use one Shadal Dragon once, in fact, once per turn and only that turn. That's really good right there. If it's flipped, you can target card your opponent controls and put it back in the opponent's hand. But if it's destroyed by a card effect, you can destroy a spell or trap card they control. Now for one of my favorites, Shadal Falcon, which kind of reminds me of Gusto Falco. It's a dark attribute spellcaster tuner monster. I guess Konami is giving a little little hint that they might come out with a sinker support monster. Maybe not saying they will, but it's just a prediction. Uh, anyway, level two, six hundred attack and fourteen hundred defense. Is a flip effect. Target one Shadal monster in your graveyard, except Shadal Falcon. It's special to that target face down defense position. Now the first effect is really good actually basically when it's flipped take one of your shadows who have an have a flip effect and put it face down if this card sent to the graveyard by a card effect you can special summon this card from your graveyard in face down defense position you can only use the effect of shell falcon effect once per turn and only that turn so basically if your opponent tries to use shield crush on it you'd be like you destroyed my shadow falcon i'll put it back face down you just wasted your dark hole or if you're well, excuse me, Shield Crush. But if your opponent uses Dark Hole, basically the same thing. Which I don't know why anyone would want to waste their Dark Hole on a set monster, unless, depending on what the set monster is, of course. Now for Shadal Hedgehog. It's a Dark Attribute Spellcaster Effect, level 3, 800 attack, and 200 defense. As a flip effect, you could add one Shadal Spell or Trap card from your deck. Egg to the hand. And this card reminds me a little bit of um, Spellbook Magician, except with spells and traps. And Shadals, of course. If this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can add one Shadal monster from your deck to your hand. You can use the effect of Shadal Hedgehog as effect once per turn and only that turn. That's pretty good. Either you can add spell or trap card or a monster card. Now for Shadal Lizard. It's a dark attribute, spellcaster, effect, level 4, 1800 attack, and 1000 defense. It's a flip, target one monster on the field, destroy that target. Reminds me of uh, Old Vindictive, or Maneater Bug. If this card sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can send one Shadal all card from your deck to the graveyard, except Shadal Lizard. You can only use the effect of Shadal Lizard's effect once per turn and only that turn. It seems that the Shadals like to send each other from the deck to the graveyard a lot. Basically, I guess they're trying to tell you to send these spell trap cards to the graveyard. So what if they're destroyed by a particular card effect? Or if uh, you can send the monsters in, if they're destroyed by a card effect, you can basically add those targets to your hand. Or do whatever. Now for the spell card. Shadal Fusion. Spell card normal. You can only activate one Shadal Fusion per turn. Basically, only activate. Basically, like Spellbook Secrets, you can only activate one of these once per turn. Anyway, Fusion Summon one Shadal Fusion monster from your extra deck using the monster from your hand or your side of the field as fusion materials. If your opponent controls a, a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck, you can only. Also. Mo Use the monsters from your main deck as fusion materials. Wow. 
So basically, and put it short terms, or if you didn't understand what I was saying, if your opponent used a monster from the well, special summons a monster from the extra deck, for example, synchro summon or exceed summoning. Basically, you can use monsters from your main deck as well. Now that's, I guess, really good. I guess or uh, it's good, but you have to make sure your opponent. You know, if you want to use that effect, you got to make sure your opponent. You know, use monsters from the extra deck. Which, of course, most players these days use monsters from the extra deck. But there might be some players who might not use monsters from the extra deck. And we got. The trap card, Shadal Roots. It's a continuous trap card. I guess I, I know I'd get that reverse, but yeah, you probably get the point by seeing the image right here. Uh, special summon this card as the effect monster spellcaster, dark attribute, level 9, attack 1450, defense 1950. If this card this card is also treated as a trap card. Basically, it's one of those monster traps. If this card was summoned this way, you can substitute this card as any attribute for fusion material monsters listed on a Shadal fusion monster. If this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target one Shadal spell and tracker in your graveyard exceptional roots and add that target to your hand. Wow, that's good right there. So basically, if you want to, you know, fusion summon for that one Shadal monster that requires a light monster, you can use this card as the substitute right there if it was special summon, you know, that particular way. So you would treat it as a light monster, and play your Shadal Fusion, and Fusion Summon right there. But if it was destroyed by your spell, or a spell, a sport, it's card effect, for example, MST, you can add one of your Shadal Spells and Traps, except Shadal Roots. Now there's one more card. It's around here somewhere. Let's see. Here it is, Curse of the Shadow Prison. It's a spell, field spell. Each time a Shadal monster is sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card effect, place one spell stone counter. Wow, I haven't heard those in a while. Anyway, on this card, each of those monsters. Basically, if your opponent destroys one of your Shadals by a card effect, you can add a Shadal. Uh, sorry, not Shadal. Excuse me. Spell stone counter on this card. During your opponent on its turn, only all monsters they control loses 100 attack for each spell stone counter. On this card, if this, if you would fusion summon a Shadal fusion monster, you can move three sp Shadal sweet <laughs> spell stone counters from this card, or to use one face up monster your opponent controls as a fusion material monster. This card reminds me a little bit of super polymerization. Not as good as super polymerization. I would have to say super polymerization is a little bit better. But yeah. It, and so far, it doesn't explain if there's any limits to how many spell tone counters you can have. It kind of reminds me of uh, the Citadel hey, spell spell that, you know, spell <laughs> spell stone counters play used to use. I'm sorry if I'm, you know, rambling on or if I'm stuttering a little. I'm sorry if, about that. Just all this, you know, talking about these cards is kind of twisting my tongue a little into a knot. So that's the archetype. Uh, leave on the comment section down below and tell me what you think about the archetype right here. Do you like it? Do you hate it? If you leave your opinions down below, uh, I actually like them. I might make a deck out of these monsters, and I think they're pretty good. Once the other set comes out, if they do have another set, I'm not saying they will have another set, but if they do have another set, I think they could have really good potential of being good. Some of you might think they're not that great. Well, Ghost Tricks didn't seem that great, and now look at them. They're seeming good right now. Ever since more support came out for them, they've been doing really good. So that's my video. Please leave a like, a favorite, if you, uh, leave me suggestions, and uh, thanks for watching. See ya.